The next thing I'm going to do to make my life simpler is I'm going to create a folder to put these 20 images in. So to create a new folder, I can hit Shift Command N on my keyboard, and I'm just going to call this Contact Sheet. Because that's what we're doing next. Up here in my folders menu, now I have a Contact Sheet folder. So I'm going to click on the first one, and I'm going to click on the last one. I'm going to click and hold for a second and then drag them over to the contact sheet and now they are ready to go for the next step. Now all of the images are in a folder we're gonna hit command A to select them all and we're gonna go back up to the menu within the bridge and select tools go down to Photoshop and choose contact sheet 2 and a dialog will pop up. So Right up top it says source image, 20 files, and down here we have some things we need to address. So I want my document units to be inches, and I want you to pick a width of 8, and a height of 10, and a resolution of 240. So 8 by 10 will give us a little bit of extra space on our contact sheet. We'll have a white border around it. A resolution of 240 is what we print to using an inkjet printer. So we want it to be RGB, we want it to be 8-bit, and we want it to be Adobe RGB 1998 for our color profile. Now this little guy right here says flatten all layers. So we're going to leave that checked on. But sometimes you might want to leave it off if you want to go back and change your file names. So flattening all layers means at the end we're going to have one small file. If we don't flatten all layers and we had 20 images, we'd have 20 image layers and 20 text layers. But those text layers are editable as are the image layers. So if you needed to move things around at a later date, you could do that if you did not flatten the images. So sometimes it's a good idea, sometimes it's not. For right now, let's flatten. Okay, thumbnails. Place, across first. Well, that's what we do traditionally uh, from the past in the darkroom. What we would make in the darkroom, a way to view our negatives after we process the film. So we didn't make prints of everything, we didn't have a computer to look at things, so we made a contact sheet. The next thing we look at are columns and rows. So columns go up and down and rows go across. So we want four columns and five rows for our 20 images. We don't want to click rotate for best fit. If we did that, traditional photo shoot where we had horizontal and verticals would flip them all to be the same and we'd have to flip the page back and forth to view the images. We will use auto spacing and then we're going to pick a font and a size. So it's best to pick a size of 8 or 9. If the font is too large the image names won't fully be readable and if you can't read the names there's no point in the contact sheet and you'll have to go back and regenerate your contact sheet. So 8 or 9 is the best way to go here. Now we click OK and it's going to do its thing. It's going to create a page with all of our images. It takes a second. It's auto sizing everything in the background. Here it is. That looks awesome you guys. This is what you want. You want to fill the page with your contact sheet. This is what you're going to turn in. Do not turn in the 20 individual images. Only turn in this one contact sheet. Now, when you guys are looking at it in the bridge, it might look funky. One or two of you are going to have this problem. It's been an ongoing issue for many, many years. So shoot me an email if things don't look right to you, which means if the colors are all the same. I don't know why it happens, but it does. And it's never been addressed. I've asked many times. Most of you will not have that as an issue. Good job! On to the next assignment.